Today I've got a Singer 328K to show you. We're going to go through its basic features. I just finished servicing this one. It was one of the more gritty, nasty, dirty machines I've had to deal with in quite a while. We're just going to show you the basic features and this one is going to be up for sale as well. I'm going to show you what I'm going to include with it. So let's get nitty gritty and show you what we got. Put my hair up so I don't get caught in anything. Get a cup of coffee. and get cracking here. This machine happens to come with the pedal. I'm going to include four vintage steel bobbins, the original four cams that it was supposed to come with, and the zigzag cam is installed, zigzag foot, the zigzag needle plate, four fresh needles, and I'm going to install two needles into the machine today and that's going to be included as well. The thing we're going to do is we are going to wind a bobbin because I don't want to run off my cones. So I'm going to go through this first thread guide up through that get me a fresh bobbin and I'm going to leave these bobbins with thread on them but it's pretty high quality stuff I get it all from CTS stick my bobbin on gotta release the clutch push this thing down then you can hold on to the thread until it snaps but I still like to snip it And this is, does not automatically stop. So you need to stop it. Don't forget to re-engage the clutch. Lift this guy up. And we have one bobbin wound. And this is a pretty basic dry machine. Not a whole lot to it. So I'm just going to go ahead and thread it up for twin needle. That's about the only major feature this machine has, other than just a straight stitch, a few decorative stitches, and zigzag. And the first thing we're going to do is run both of our threads through that tension or through this thread guide. And then we're going to take our threads, and we are going to run them through the tension assembly. Now, pay very close attention. This tension assembly has two sets of discs in it. And that's for each thread to go through. We're going to go through the take-up lever. And try not to twist them as you do this. The less you twist it, the better off you are. And of course, my foot is up. Make sure your foot's up. And then I generally drop the foot after I get enough thread through there. And then we take our two threads after we go through that, the take up lever, and we're going to run it through this thread guide right here. And they both need to run through there. Interesting enough, I have yet to read the manual for this. I don't have the manual to go with it. There we are. Like I said, you don't want to tangle it up. Try to keep it untwisted as possible. And then I'm going to take my first thread, come down here and go through that thread guide. And then this one's just going to stay out of that thread guide because this keeps it from twisting together. Now we need to install a couple of needles so that way we can get this rolling here. I'm going to turn my light on and I have replaced the light with an LED light. And like I said, this is a pretty cut and dry machine. It's straight stitches, it's zigzags, and a few decoratives. In fact, if I recall right, it won't actually use all of the decoratives, just a few. So I'm going to take two needles in my fingers, and if you feel, they should both slide up in there. I'm going to tighten it down. So you can physically install two needles. And with that said, I'm going to thread my first needle. and my second needle. And these needles are a size 14 standard sharp. And 
must need some more coffee. There we are. And there we have it. And like I stated, make sure that one goes through this and the other one does not. We want to install our bar bobbin here, and I've already pre-wound one. And it's a class 66 drop-in bobbin, so you drop it in there, making sure that it's counterclockwise. Slide it on over into the groove and back. And this plate has actually got a cutout, so you don't have to try to get it through a little hole like the 401. Then if you did everything right, our thread should come right on up. Look at that. This is a low shank machine. Pretty easy to find parts for. Kind of neat that it's a low shank machine that takes two needles. I thought that was slant shank only type stuff. And you just screw it on just like any other low shank foot that you have. Well, let's get to sewing and see what this thing can do. Got two layers of muslin here. Just standard run-of-the-mill cotton muslin. And we're just going to do a quick straight stitch. So not bad. The tension's a little high on the top. But it's not terrible. Get our threads back here. And then let's go ahead and put some leather underneath there. like about two layers is about all I can get out of this machine. It seems to be having problems after two layers because now I'm on the third layer and I'm having to help it. Yeah, so not an overly strong machine. So two layers of leather is about all you're going to get out of this guy. Yeah, and it did pretty poorly after two layers. It also could be that I'm twin needling as well. It may do better with a single needle. Yeah, I think I pulled, I did, I pulled my thread out. Dang it. Oh no, I didn't. There we go. There we are. Well, let's try denim. Got my denim tester here. So there's two layers, three layers, four layers, five, six. So I did pretty well with the with denim. So not a super heavy duty machine, especially if you're twin needling. Don't think you're gonna be pushing pushing heavy leather through this machine, but it looks like you could do some pretty heavy cottons and denims. Let's try our zigzag here. And when you zigzag with this machine, you have to be cautious not to bring the zigzag too far, otherwise you'll bust your needle off, because we do have two needles installed. I think we can go just a little, yep, a little bit wider, about a number two on the dial. We'll tighten up our stitch. Not bad. Yeah, I did put it pretty good with that. 
So to give it a chance, I pulled out a needle. And well, let's try our leather test one more time with a single needle in it. And see what we get. We're going to go to a fairly long stitch. And this machine does not have extra lift on the foot. So it does a lot better, but it seems like about two layers is the most that this machine really will handle. Because it started skipping stitches after the third layer. So it did okay on the first layer, second layer, third and fourth, not so much. And it could be that I'm just using a standard sharp, but I found most good high-end machines that are strong can generally sew four layers of that stuff, at least on the home side. So it's not a bad machine, it's just not a top-notch machine. Let's see, we got some, let's fold our muslin into eight layers here. Let's see if we can get to go through the seam. Ah, oh, yeah, no problem. I did really well on eight-ish layers of muslin here, and that's 16 layers right there because it's folded over in that, in that hem. So it does really well, but it, leather not so much. spend a minute or so on the cam department this is the cam and to change it out you simply unscrew that nut and this machine takes the flat singer cams and of course you see number one zigzag is already installed and if you wanted to install another cam you just drop a fresh one in there and bolt it in and you're done pretty simple setup so it'll take some decoratives. I'm giving you the zigzag and four decorative, four decorative ones. Well, actually, it looks like there's two zigzags I'm giving you with it. So you're getting two zigzag cams. Never know, you might break this one. Zigzag is kind of handy to have. Now, this machine will left, center, and right the needle, which is really fantastic if you want to get really, really close to the edge. It'll zigzag. And then a stitch length, of course, forward and reverse. If you, need a, if you want to change it to a different stitch, you, of course, replace the cam and you increase the zigzag. Otherwise, this is a pretty basic machine. It would be a really great machine for somebody that was just doing lightweight upholstery or... Yeah, it might even work really well for quilting simply because it's a low shank and finding walking feet and accessories for this class of machine is really simple. But the main, the main thing I do like about it is, is you can put in two needles, twin needle, without an actual twin needle. That makes your twin needling solutions very cheap. You can buy a package of 100 Oregons, stuff two of them in there, and twin needle all day long. You break a needle, you're not cussing because the needle didn't cost you $5. Thank you for watching all of our videos at So Saves Me, and I am Stevie from SD Gear, and I just wanted to say, if you really like our videos, please click that button at the bottom that says subscribe, and if you need supplies or you're going to attempt to do all these things yourself using our tutorial, please go and click the link below and buy some TriFlow from Amazon. We get a little kickback for it, and it's a little motivation for us to keep making these wonderful videos. If you have any questions, comments, Please, leave them at the bottom. If you have a machine that you'd like us to service or maybe go through, let us know. Hit us up on our Facebook page, and we'll see if we can find one of those machines and get you a tutorial made off of that thing. Thank you.